Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you how I made these cute little bookmarks and planner clips with digi stamps from Heartcraft Paper. They make great little gifts, perfect for stocking stuffers or even non-candy valentines. I started by printing my images out on cardstock. You can see I have sets here with mirrored images for the front and back of each clip. On my floral banner, I added the text after flipping the second image so that you'll be able to read it from either side. I made a set like this once before, but since I didn't have a reverse image of my stamp, I left the back plain. I got a lot of people asking me how I made the clips, so I thought I'd create a tutorial, and this time I'd make them double-sided for you. When I printed out my images, I also created labels for my clips. I'm going to cut those out later with a stitched rectangle die. It's just a pretty way to package them. So I've already colored most of my images here before we started. I'm just going to quickly go through the Copic coloring of my hedgehogs. You can see the colors that I use on my caps, but obviously you can use any color combinations you like. I generally use two to three shades of each color for my highlights and shadows, and I'm coloring both images at the same time so that they end up looking the same. If you color one all the way through from start to finish, and then you come back even with the same colors, you might accidentally switch techniques or the way you're uh, flicking the color around, and then you could have two different looking images at the end. For my hedgehog, I decided to color his body with some skin tones, and then I wanted to give him a bright pop of color on his quills. I thought that would be lots of fun. I actually recently did this on another card, and I like the color combination so much, I'm pulling it up again. I realize my uh, gray caps are off the screen here. I used an N5 and an N7 for the inside of his mouth. And since I'm going to use aqua for the quills, I thought red popped off that nicely too. For my quills, I'm going to start with the darkest color, and I'm outlining the edges of his body. This just creates some depth and shadows. And then I use a flicking motion to draw in some of the quills. Then I'm going to pull out my medium shade, extend those shadows a bit, and then fill in some more quills. This part goes fast. Then I'm bringing in my lightest shade, and I'll finish filling in the image and blend a little bit. At this point, I felt like I wanted to darken up my shadows a bit more, so I added a second coat of my two darker shades. That's just going to give some more dimension to this cute little guy. After everything's colored, I'm going to use my scan and cut to cut out the images. And before I run it through, I use a pencil to connect any little pieces that I don't want the machine to cut out separately. So right here, the halo, I want it all to be one piece. After they're cut out, there'll be a little bit of negative space that didn't get cut out, like between leaves here. I'm going to use a light gray marker just to color in that space. I usually like to go around the edges of my fussy cut images with a black sharpie. Just helps give you a more finished look. And I make sure that I go around both pieces so that uh, there's a solid black line around the edge. If you're doing the same thing and using pastel colors and you're afraid that a black marker would just look too dark or have too much contrast, you can always use the darkest color marker that you shaded with or a gray marker for the edges. Once I've got both pieces outlined, I line them up and see if I have any of the backs peeking through. And if so, I color those areas in. For these clips, I'm using jumbo paper clips. They're large enough to support the images and not slip out of a book. I'm going to line one up and add a little bit of foam tape 
inside the well there and above the clip to hold it in place. The foam is also going to help fill in the gap created by the thickness of the clip and help give us a smoother appearance on the outside. So I'm going to add a little bit more PVA glue to the rest of the image and stick the other layer on top. And I like to use clothespins to hold it all together while it dries. After they're dry, I'm going to add finishing details with a Wink of Stellar, or sorry, Wink of Stella pen. And I used a gold gel pen for the halo. I could have done this earlier, but I didn't want to confuse my scan and cut with any weird reflections. That's not normally a problem, but every once in a while I have an issue. Next, I cut out my labels. And then I make a few more coordinating clips with scraps of ribbon and washi tape. And you can stop at this point, especially if you need your gift in a hurry. But if you have the time to let it dry, I suggest adding a layer of glossy accents to both sides, as well as around the edges to seal it up. It's going to make your clip more durable and last longer. Also, it gives you a, a fun, shiny finish. I found it easier to hold my clip with a clothespin while I'm applying the glossy accents. And then I can just let it rest over a roll of washi tape while it dries. Works perfectly to hold it. Once it's dry, just clip it on your card. And since it's a little piece of art that I made, I always like to sign the back. And after that, folks, you're done. Quick and easy, right? So here's a look at some of my finished sets. I actually made a bunch of these for Christmas. Pretty cute, right? And look at all that shine and dimension. You can give these out as planner clips or bookmarks. You just change the wording on your label. You can find links for everything I used on my blog. And if you like today's video, click the like, subscribe, and the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching.